Hello everyone and welcome to Market Madness webinar. Just before we, uh, we even start the webinar, I just wanted to tell everybody that uh, I'm going to give one section to ask questions. Uh, this webinar is not very long, okay? Although it's very interesting, I know the last webinar uh, was a bit confusing, all right? So I made sure that uh, I put everything in place for all of you so that you can have a better understanding of the Bollinger Band. Uh, on top of that, I will be providing you with a full strategy. Uh, these strategies are basically uh, normal strategies, a bit more complex, uh, very efficient strategies that will work for uh, analysis uh, since the Bollinger Bands are uh, especially for, for market movement analysis. Um, so yeah, so let's start with, uh, with our webinar. So first of all, welcome to Sunbird's Market Madness. Today we will be speaking about our second section of our fifth course. Um, we will be pro you will be provided with a full strategy, all right, and a recap of what we learned the last webinar. Okay, so first of all, let's have a small review of the Bollinger Bands. Um, the Bollinger Bands is, like I said before, a technical uh, analysis tool invented by, as you all know, John Bollinger in the in the eighties. Um, basically, as you can see what I wrote here in my presentation, um, it's an indicator that, um, that analyze the volatility of the market, meaning basically the market movement, um, whether it's high, whether it's low, uh, on the relative price. Um, Bollinger Bands, as you can see here, are a volatility indicator. Uh, they consist of, uh, of having a moving average. Uh, I will show you later on, on, on our next, um, next page what, what the moving average is. Uh, an upper band and a lower band. Um, now on your MetaTrader or any other, uh, any other platform, um, when you will be assigning the Bollinger Band, you will need to set up, the, uh, set up values for the Bollinger Band. So the typical values are 20 and 2. Um, so yeah, so let's see a small graph on a small chart, um, how do we place the Bollinger Band? This is my personal platform, okay, so as you can see here, I have my upper band, all right, which is in blue, my lower band, which is in red, and my moving average, okay? So this is exactly how it looks. Um, depends on platforms that you have. You can change the color. I don't think that would be uh, a big issue here. Okay. Now we will learn uh, first of all, first of all, how to in, in, uh, how to interpret uh, the Bollinger Band. Um, it varies widely among traders. Okay, um, such as myself as well. Uh, we know that if price touches the lower band. Uh, we expect a buy position and same way uh, vice versa. If prices touches upper band, we're looking on a sell position. Um, also, we need to know exactly when to exit, meaning that when to have either a stop loss or when to close the position. Um, we will be closing the position uh, normally on moving averages. Um, a lot of traders are doing that. Uh, most of traders that I know are doing the same thing. They're closing on uh, moving average because since moving average, basically, if you want to profit from that uh, extremely, um, it would be on normal volatility. Normal volatility um, is when you will see that it's it's not a it's not a it's not when the market is going on an upward or downward trend. Normal volatility is um, is when the market is kind of steady but go it, it goes up and down. Um, also, we have other um, other um, other ways to do that. Some traders think that it's best that when price touches lower band, you sell. Sometimes they expect to sell, and when price touches upper band, you buy. Uh, we will learn exactly how to manipulate that later on um, to understand better what would be the best strategy to use. Now, the main idea is very simple. Um, you will, like I said before, you you're looking on a sell option uh, when when the Bollinger Band uh, when the Bollinger Band reaches uh, is over is overbought, and when it's oversold, you're looking at a buy 
uh, option. Here, what is often what is often used is that you're looking on cell options when the Bollinger Band are fat apart, meaning that there's a big. I'm going to go back to my graph. When you'll see that there's a uh, there's a large space between the upper and the lower band, you're looking exactly at a sell option. A buy option, you're looking when the Bollinger Band are very close together. It doesn't remember that the Bollinger Band is more for uh, analysis of market movement, not nothing more. You can profit from that as an indicator to the market by setting up, for example, like pending orders, like I said on my previous webinars. And you, and you can benefit from it. And I will be providing you with uh, a simple strategy and another strategy for, for the Bollinger Band so that you can grasp the main idea of it. Um, now, when Bollinger Bands are close together, uh, basically it shows a period of low volatility in the market, uh, whether it's stock market. Basically it's more about stock market, but also currency price, depending on the currency as well. Uh, when Bollinger Band are fat, fat apart, uh, when Bollinger Band are fat uh, or far apart, sorry, uh, uh, it basically it shows a period of high volatility in the stock or currency price, um, and especially very important when Bollinger Band are parallel. Uh, when they're parallel, where it doesn't have to be uh, perfectly parallel, um, it has also to be. It also has to be on an extended time, like you, like I said here, like I wrote here. Price will be found to go up and down like a channel. Okay, so you can benefit from it, and we'll show. I'll show you how later in, in our next pages. Now, um, I'm going to start with my with the first strategy, which is a simple strategy. Uh, and then I'm going to provide you with five to ten minutes to ask any questions, and then we're going to look into um, we're going to look into a live market and see what we can find uh, with uh, with that. Uh, depending on the currency, I'm going to ask all of you what currency do you prefer, whether it's your U.S. dollar, CHF, etc. And we're going to try and find a way to um, apply m our strategies together. Okay. So we have our simple strategy, which is first part of our simple strategy. Now it is efficient. It, it is an efficient strategy. Now I wouldn't suggest to apply that to all currencies already. I want to. I want to apply first of all my our basic strategies. If you can look on our Sunbird page, uh, you will see that on my previous webinars I provided with uh, with basic strategies that work. Um, that are very, very much more efficient to the, from that strategy. I would prefer that we set our uh, our pending orders based on our basic strategies first, and then we can start analyzing uh, using the the this indicator of uh, of the Bollinger. Now, so let's start with a simple strategy. It, it has been found. All right, so I'm going to read here. It has been found that buying uh, buying the breaks of the lower Bollinger Band is a way to take advantage of or, or oversold condition. Now, when we see that it was oversold, we're looking again, like I said before, on a buy position. Um, when the lower band is broken due to heavy selling, meaning that a lot of traders are selling, and the Bollinger band, and the market it reaches the lower band, you're looking to buy. Now. A lot of traders are looking to buy. It is also personally, um, in my personal perspective, I sometimes use pending orders to buy and to close. Whether whether I'm putting a stop loss or not, I'm, remember putting stop losses is very important. Uh, simply because you want to limit your losses. You don't want to open just a position like that and expect it to go good. And if it goes bad, you're losing more than you than you're expecting to. Now, personally, what I what I normally expect when it breaks uh, the lower band, I'm looking on the sell position. And when I'm looking on a sell position, uh, my position opens, and I'm taking profit or putting a stop loss. Uh, when it's a sell position, I'm putting a stop loss on the moving average. Okay. So. The part two of our simple strategy is that, um, all, from what we know, every strategy has its, has its drawbacks. Meaning that, again, if it works on the sell position, it also works on the buy position. Okay, meaning that 
um, if let's say uh, if let's say um, it breaks it breaks our uh, our upper band okay first of all let me let me get back to what I said before I might have mistaken on what I said um, on our first part okay meaning that if it breaks my lower band I'm looking into buying and if I take profit I would be taking profit on my moving average so let me rectify what I said if the market breaks my lower band it means that it was due, it was due to uh, a high volatility of uh, of traders to that that are selling so I'm looking to buy and if I'm looking to buy I'm looking to open a position on buy and taking profit on my moving average on the rate we will see later on on the rate of my moving average let's check our ps um, our previous chart if let's say it broke here as you can see I'm looking to buy alright so I'm buying now even though it's breaking a little bit my my profit will start after this line after this rate okay and sometimes you will see that it doesn't always work simply because the moving average follows the market movement so basically what I would suggest to do in that case is that to put a take profit uh, a bit higher than the between the upper band and the moving average uh, most traders they do moving they do take profit or stop losses on moving averages all right I personally to be more precise I put my take profit or stop loss between either uh, the upper band and the moving average or the lower band and the moving average okay now like I said before it's it's the it, we have our drawbacks meaning that there it, there's the same there's the same case when uh, the market breaks the upper band whenever it breaks the upper band like as you saw here all right in that point or in that point or in that section you will see that you're looking to sell so if you're selling you're gonna sell at it either a take profit between between the uh, moving average and the uh, and the lower band okay or like most traders do they do uh, basically uh, moving average only now uh, in this case all right remember I put a I, I put a 30 minute rate so for those who want to uh, to uh, for those who are asking which rate uh, which time rate it, it is best to trade on personally I would suggest 30 minutes if you're looking on uh, on a long period position, uh, a long time in, in investment on on a certain currency, um, I would highly recommend doing it in uh, in cases of one hour or even sometimes thirty minutes to analyze more the the, the market movement. Okay, so again, here I wrote we're going also we're going to also take advantage of overbought condition, meaning that as you, as you saw before, when the pri price broke the upper band, we understood that the price was overbought, so we're looking to sell. Uh, when upper band is broken due to heavy buying, meaning that a lot of traders, a lot of investors are buying to that currency, it is best to start selling because at a certain point the market will go against all these traders that are actually buying. All right, so basically, let's set up. Uh, I'm going to set up our Bollinger Band, the SBB strategy. I call it simple Bollinger Band. All right, SBB stands for simple Bollinger Band. Again, this is a very simple uh, analysis and small strategy that is efficient to use. All right, um, I can't personally tell you at what rate to close or what rate to open, um, but you got the main idea. All right, and from what we spoke on my on my previous webinars, you'll understand more um, where, and you'll 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 follow your expectations and understand where to close your position. Now, first of all, we need to set up our Bollinger Band after following parameters. Um, when you when you assign the Bollinger Band, you will have um, two option two uh, two standard uh, one standard de uh, devia uh, de deviation and one average. All right, so the average is 20, and the standard uh, deviation is 2. 
Um, also, what we what we need to do is that we need to set up tangent line on the bands. Sorry, um, and I'll explain later on on um, a live market uh, on my personal um, personal platform how to set up our bands. Um, and then we will have our expectation. If the current market breaks lower band, uh, means that it was oversold. So we're looking into a buy position. Um, if current market breaks the upper band, we're we're looking we're looking that it was overbought. So we're looking on a sell position. Um, after that, what we need to do is that we need to assign the pending orders. Remember, it is best. Again, the key is to write all your positions. Um, I'm going to explain again the reason why is that when you open anonymous positions um, based on your uh, either feelings or uh, you're too eager to open that, that position or you look at your uh, an opportunity, it's not best because if it breaks and has a correction against you, it is the worst thing that you can, that, that you can have at the moment. That's why it is the best thing to do is to ride these positions before opening them, opening them and also assigning pending orders. The reason why I'm telling you that is assigning pending orders is best because if the market rate doesn't reach your current rate, uh, the, cur the current rate that you assign to the pending order, the position won't open and most likely it will go against that p the position that you, uh, that you wanted to open. So you're avoiding a bad position, so it's good. So you assign your pending orders. Remember that take profit will be mostly at moving average or again like I said before, uh, between upper band and moving average or between uh, moving out, uh, lower band moving average depends on what position you're taking. Um, stop losses. Personally, I would suggest to put a stop loss of a minimum of 20 to 25 pips. Okay, and I think you would be you would be good good to go. So for now, this is this is our simple um, Bollinger Band strategy. I'm going to give five minutes because I, I prefer that everybody grasp the idea of the SVB strategy uh, before we even go to our next strategy, which is a, a bit, it's not, it's not more complicated, all right, but I want you to grasp the main idea of the simple Bollinger Band strategy. So I'm going to give five to ten minutes, and I'm going to open a live platform to give a few examples and to see what we can uh, decipher on our... Um, on our Bollinger Band, on a normal volatility as well, um, and to see what we can uh, what we can analyze from this. So I'm going to give five to ten minutes, starting now. Also, um, whether you prefer or not, I would uh, highly recommend to tell me which currency you prefer me uh, having as an example to analyze the current market. So whether it's your US dollar, or so I'm going to see the suggestions and the, mo the currency that um, has the most, uh, most votes um, wins the, <laughs> the analysis. So go ahead if you need to. Okay, so I have an excellent question here. What is the best time to trade on Bollinger Band chart? Um, like I said before, personally, I analyze my chart. Um, I analyze my chart on a 30-minute basis, so it, it is good. Whether sometimes it's best if you're looking on a, a long, uh, a long-term period of, a, of an investment. Um, so I would suggest a bit more, more of one hour, one hour, two hours thing. Uh, time period. So again, we have five minutes, five to ten minutes, um, before we even, before we continue, I will be answering the, uh, I will be answering questions.
Okay, so I have a good question. What currency pair would would I suggest to trade on the Bollinger Band? Uh, Bollinger Band? Where, where personally, to be honest, uh, the major currency that has the most, uh, not the, not exactly the most, but from what I see, um, the biggest movement is the euro. So whether it's your US dollar or uh, or the Japanese yen, it is very uh, it is very uh, those two currencies um, are very volatile and decide a lot uh, market movement. Um, <clears throat> also, the GBP. Personally, uh, to be honest, major currencies: euro, Japanese yen, US dollar, uh, the GBP. Um, and recently the CHF, the Swiss franc, uh, from what you saw, if you can analyze the Swiss franc, you will see, for example, the Euro CHF um, in the last two months jumped to uh, um, at least 1,000 pips. So whether you, you can decide whether, whether or not, uh, you can analyze whether the market is volatile or not. But mostly, mostly, um, most mostly on uh, on major currencies In the in the meantime, again, um, please choose a currency pair that you would like me to analyze uh, with you guys. Remember, my name is not Lucia; it's Adam Williams. <laughs> I know that some of you are confusing, um, so yeah. Okay, I see a lot of you are hesitating between uh, US dollar, Japanese yen, and the GBP USD. So I'm just going to verify which one is mostly volatile. Actually, let's do both. Okay, let's start with the GBP USD. Just a moment to set up my platform. Okay, so I'm just gonna stop. I'm just gonna stop the questions for now, uh, so that we can assign uh, everything. All right. Then I'm gonna give another two minutes to see what you think about this currency pair, and uh, we can continue analyzing uh, and start moving on the U.S. dollar Japanese yen. Okay. So as you can see, this is currency. All right, this is on a one-hour chart. Let's do a 30-minute. Cool. Let's move this a bit, and let's put our Bollinger Band. And then let's put our moving average, which will be in yellow. Okay. So first of all, 
So what we see is that we see that the market here is going towards a um, a sell position. All right, from the from our previous days between March March first and uh, between the March first and fourth. All right, for those who trade on, on the GBP US dollar, we saw that it had a it had a breakthrough. All right. And had a breakthrough, you should be realizing at this period of time, I think it was, uh, let me see, it was March 1st at 10.30. Okay, the Bollinger Band got very, very far apart at the split second. Now, for those of you who have traded, you see that one ball, one, the upper band goes up higher and the lower band goes lower. So it's, they're getting far, far, uh, far apart. And then what you saw is that you saw a sell, you see a sell, sell opportunity. So what you do is that you sell. Okay, moving average as well is going towards a sell position, actually on a line. Okay, so and then you saw what happened is that it got very tight. And what we saw before in, uh, in my presentation is that when we see that the market is getting very tight, we're looking on a buy position. So exactly what the GBP US dollar is, is doing is going upwards. Okay. So for now, now that you're looking at the ball and band at the moment, okay, it's not very tight. It's a bit fat. Okay. Uh, it passed through. Um, it passed through uh, the upper bands. So Are you looking on? A sell position. Remember, this is not very. This is not a normal volatility. All right, a normal volatility you're going to see it in our previous days and weeks. All right, except for a cr big corrections. These big corrections are basically made due to uh, to uh, to the news, to uh, uh, events, bailout plans, everything. Uh, rates, current rates, tax rates. Uh, you're going to see that either it's if if. Um, market goes down, there must be a reason. That's why we need to do uh, a fundamental analysis, meaning looking at the news uh, calendar, the economic calendar, to see what's ha what, what's, what happened or what's going to happen, etc. This is very important that you look at, that you that you watch the news, that you follow the news, because they could guide you to. Uh, some traders actually trade on fundamental analysis only. I personally, I do both. All right, I want to assure myself that my trades are perfectly fine and that I will be making profit out of them I want to follow both even if it's, even if it's going to make me uh, extra work it doesn't matter extra work uh, will bring me a lot of money so on normal volatility you can see here it, it, it works fine okay because if we look here we're gonna see the options okay I'm doing it as well okay so what I want to do is that I want to set up my tangent lines okay so um, I'm going to put a few lines. I'm going to put two lines. All right, I'm going to put a line here. You know what better? Let's do this section. Okay. The tension line here before it started going up. We saw that we saw here that it's starting to go up, but our tangent line we put it here because we have the spot we have the Bollinger band. After that we don't see any Bollinger band, but at the at the time given this was our tangent line and here in our previous in the time given this was our tangent line as well so I'm just gonna make it a bit wider and change the color to something that we can analyze pretty well can put it in white But then in white as well. Now remember, this is just a base strategy. I want you to grasp the idea of it. Okay, so what happened is that it broke through the Bollinger Band. All right, so you're looking on a buy position, uh, on a, a sell position, and you're closing at the moving average. Okay, so first of all, let's go back at it, right? Because before we saw that the current market broke um, it broke the lower band 
all right so it was oversold so you're looking on a buy position so if you're looking on a buy position you're opening your position on buy and you're closing like I said before I would prefer between uh, the upper band and the um, the moving average okay uh, some traders again like I said before they they close on moving averages basically it's scalping all right but it's not with uh, either neither expert advisors or anything this this is just penning orders so basically I'm going to penning order a bit lower than than my uh, lower band okay because I don't want it to slightly touch it and go co and continuously back I'm going to put a stop loss 20 pips of difference or 25 whether you want and I'm going to close my position between the um, between the uh, the upper band and the moving average. Same same thing here. Basically, what happened is that uh, it broke through the upper band. I'm looking sell position, and I'm closing between either again. Sometimes it doesn't work, but between. Uh, the lower band and the moving averages and some traders that like I said before they close on moving averages um, so it was on the sell position and you can continue like that on normal volatility. But now let's we can do here okay I'm just gonna put my lines upwards I don't want to do anything now what we're what we're looking at is that it's very simple first of all what I want to do is that I want to put my tangent lines my tangent lines right now they're here one here and one here. Okay, these are my tangent line, meaning that at the moment I'm looking on an upward trend a bit. That's why it's not um, recommended to to do that at the moment. And like I said, it's preferably it works more on stable volatility. Um, but I know that if the current market breaks my tangent line, I'm going to open a I'm going to open a sell position, and I'm going to close here. Okay, so I'm just going to give you like five minutes to ask, to, not to ask questions, but to tell me exactly what you think. All right, what would you do in, instead? Okay, some of you would sell if it breaks. Okay, good. And now you have your stop loss again of 20 pips of difference. Now, uh, here's a good question. How do I decide tra uh, trend or line, meaning tangent line? Tangent line, when it's slightly, uh, tangent line is something like that, as you can see. Um, it's, not very, it's not very precise, okay, because normal when, uh, normally it's a, a parabola, okay? Look at this line right here. This could be my tangent line or if I want alright this this is basically called just gonna put it in red and put it okay this normally is a tangent or to be a bit precise, this exactly a tangent. But in the market, these tangent lines need to be. Oh, my bad. It's a tip. Okay, you can put other line, other tangent lines. All right, I'm going to show you. Let's put it again like we said we did before. These t this would be more second. Let's change it from here to here. There you go. That would be best. Okay, has to be more precise, but you know what? I, you, you know the main idea. And here, the current tangent line. Here, so if it breaks, that's why I put it on the tip. It doesn't matter because one way or another, it's break. If it breaks, I'm going to sell, and if I sell, I'm going to take profit on 
my moving average, or again, like I said before, uh, between the moving average and the lower band. Okay, so for now we don't have a lot of time, so I can't do the two currencies, but you get the main idea. All right, basically what I want to do is that I want to work on a second strategy. Okay, so let's go back to our presentation. Okay, um, I'm going to stop the questions here for now until I finish the webinar, and then uh, I'm, you're going to ask questions. And I'll be uh, glad. I'll be glad to answer them, and then we will finish our session for the Bollinger Band. So let's get back to all right. <clears throat> what we can do with the, the uh, SVB and SNR. Remember, SVB is simple Bollinger Band strategy, and SNR is a, a support and resistance strategy. We can use both strategies at, at the same time, but following the the Bollinger Band only, meaning that. If you're putting the pending orders that, like we said before, uh, you're putting pending orders. And most of the time, if you're following the Bollinger Band, it won't reach that, uh, that, that uh, cur the, the currency that you're assigning. So you need to be kind of very careful. Um, first of all, what you need to do is that you will need to set up your Bollinger Band at, the, at, at average of 20 and standard, standard dev, dev, uh, dev, deviation at 2. Then you set up your tangent line on the bands like we did before. You have your expectations. You assign your pending orders. Your take profit, all right, if let's say it breaks through um, resistance, okay, take profit from 35 to 50 pips. Stop loss, put it at moving average. All right, let's, have, let's view a small example here. This is tangent resistance. Remember, I'm putting, I'm doing... I'm doing the SNR and the SVB at the same time. I'm looking at the GBP Euro. Okay, this is what this was from uh, last week. So basically, I put a tangent line. This is my tangent resistance, and this is my tangent support. You can see a small. I'm following one upper band. This is my tangent small. Lower than that, there's no point of it. Okay. Now, uh, you have your tangent upper band, and you have your tangent lower band, okay? If it breaks tangent resistance, trust me, go, go, uh, go long, and if it breaks tangent support, go short. Why? Because one way or another, it's going to go back down, and it's not going to go back down um, really, really uh, in a split second, but it's going to go back down. So you want to make sure that if it goes down, your pending order will will apply and will continue to go down um, and having the assigned take profits. So look at it. This is, as you can see, the SNR strategy and the SBB strategy at the same time. So we have the SBB strategy here. If it breaks here, you go back down. I didn't put the, the moving average, but you should put the moving average. It's highly recommended. You have your tangent lower band. You have your tangent resistance and your tangent support. Okay, look forward. So we have our second strategy, which is very, very, um, not only efficient, but very interesting. Uh, it's the TBB strategy. It's tight Bollinger Band. So I'm just going to read exactly what we have here. Uh, the tight Bollinger Band strategy. Okay, this strategy implies of analyzing and expecting a very high market movement. Okay, um, now the question is why is it so tight? <laughs> um, the strategy works on stable market, and you'll know exactly what stable market is. We need to be set on to an, uh, to analyze very tight and small movement. Uh, this shows that there there will be a breakout in the market, and we'll, this will be our opportunity. And I'll show you exactly what I mean by that. Uh, I'm going to bring in something that I worked on for a few for a few months with a with a special client, and I'm sure that some of you already know that I'm talking uh, I'm talking about clients that reached uh, hundreds of thousands uh, very quickly. All right. Um, remember that we need to be careful of any fake out movements. I'll, I'll explain what fake out movement is. Um, and remember that the the moving average is kind of the key of the Bollinger Band. So one 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 can't do without the other. Um, okay, so what we're going to do we're going to assign exactly everything like we did on 
on the SVB. Okay, so here is the EuroCHF before it broke out from 1,000 pips. All right, something quite amazing. Okay, what happened is that for a few months and some would say a year now, um, the EuroCHF was on a very, very stable um, a stable market, meaning that it w wouldn't go up, neither go down, or anything like that. Now, as you can see here, I put it on one hour because this is a very on a long-term investment. Um, so, here it's when it's tight. When the Bollinger Band are tight, remember what we like we said before. We're expecting a buy position. Okay, that's number one. Okay, number two is that you're going to see. I would prefer having the volume. Uh, of the market set up, all right, because it's going to show you a lot of uh, a lot of expectation uh, expectations of it. All right, so I'm going to show you how. So here we have a tightening of the of the Bollinger Band before the, the breakout. So the breakout was somewhere here. Now and then we saw that it moved highly up, but it, to be honest, it was a fake out. So what you need to do is that don't rely on that. If you see that it's going upwards. Um, in a split second, don't base your position on that. It might be a fake out. So here, like I said before, it might be a fake out. This this was a fake out. Okay, why? Because the moving average didn't start um, taking it, it its course. All right, it was still here. So you can't really expect the market to have any movement if your moving average is here. So what you're going to do is that on the fake out you're going to put a tangent line. Not a tangent line but a line that will touch the fake out because once it reaches back again then you will be opening your position because one fake out is enough to open a position after it's the fake out. All right. Also what you're going to look at is the volume expansion meaning that the volume had a quick breakout so breakout fake out had a quick breakout and then went back down immediately once it went back down you're gonna put a line here at the rate on which it stopped to its its breakout okay and then you're gonna follow the moving average you see that the moving average is taking it's starting to take its course okay it's starting move it's Continue, continuing to move, once it reaches a direction, all right, and the Bollinger Band are not very parallel, but approximately, okay, and it touches again the same rate on which it broke out before, here is your open position. Okay, at the moment we see something like that on the... Um, the uh, CHF JPY, CHF, uh, I think CHF US dollar, I'll just check very quickly if I'm not mistaken. It would be CHF JPY. Okay, these are very small, but this is how I personally work. Um, <clears throat> so we're seeing a lot of these. Uh, especially on um, on not major currencies, but on currencies that you see that there are uh, under long-term investments. For example, like uh, the CHF. Personally, I work on the CHF um, because a lot of clients are very interested in opening a long-term investment on it. So CHF is mostly uh, to to guarantee. Um, a very very high amount of profit. If you learn and if you grasp the idea of the Bollinger Band and other things, other strategies that we will be working on in the following webinars. Okay, so um, I want to have an overview of the course so that everybody is ready. Remember this course will be available in our uh, website under education, webinars, Mark and Madness. Okay. So we have the SBB strategy, which is the simple Bollinger Band strategy. Uh, what we will need to do is that, first of all, we set up our Bollinger Band for, uh, on an average of 20 and start the standard de de deviation of 2. Sorry. Um, and then we will need to set up our tangent line on the bands. We, ha we have our expectations when it breaks lower and upper, oversold, overbought, buy, sell. Then we assign our pending orders. 
uh, take profit at moving average, most recommended by most most traders. Uh, stop loss at 20 to 25 pips. Uh, expectations with SNR. If it breaks the lower band, support breaks, sell. If it breaks the upper band, resist, break, buy like we saw before. Uh, I'm going to show you again here. Tangent resistance and tangent support. So it's again the same resistance support. Uh, we assign the pending orders. Our take profit if it breaks these support and resistant Bollinger band bands. Okay, our take profit will be from 35 to 50 pips because it's going to go quite high or quite low. All right, and our stop loss would be our moving moving average. Sorry. Um, now the tight Bollinger band strategy here. All right, we will need to find a currency that has that. Uh, stable market volatility. We will be uh, having to. We will be assigning the volume. We will be assigning a, t a fake out line once it, it appears. Uh, fake out will be your break point. So once it reaches back again to your fake point, to your fake rate, this is where you open your position. Um, then you, then you, uh, you look if your volume went to a blast off like we saw before. It went to a blast off then it start cal calming down. Uh, if volume made a huge break, margin, um, the, the moving average will direct away. Okay, so if we look here, moving average here, and the volume expectation. After volume expectation, moving average has a direction. Once it has a direction, you know what position to open. Then when to open the position, when it reaches back, it the breakout. But here it was a fake out. Okay. Um, <clears throat> now, on these trades, on the TBB strategy, these trades must be lo uh, long in, in cases like that, meaning that uh, it has to be on a long time investment. Uh, it, mostly, it mostly concentrate on stocks, again, like I said before, but we can also use it to such cases as the Euro CHF or Swiss, the Swiss currency and currencies like the Swiss. Okay. So this is kind of uh, kind of uh, our webinar. Um, please do ask questions. I'm gonna I'm gonna give five minutes. Now remember that if you want a free consultation and so on, you can open an account at www.sunbirdfx.com. Uh, your referral code is uh, would be 1090 to be with me personally um, you will get one personal session with me on the best weekly strategy all right I can assure you that and you will also get a hundred percent bonus with a minimum of two thousand or more uh, deposit two thousand get two thousand uh, you can also get our forex signals for free uh, and you will be part of my market madness group Skype so feel free to ask any questions for now um, and I will be more than happy to assist you. Okay, again, um, we have a question here. How can I identify a fake out? Um, so let's look at it. Remember, a fake out, first of all, you need to understand that in order to even have a fake out, the currency pair has to be very tightened. That's why it's called the tight uh, Bollinger Band. All right, number one, it has to be very tight. Right, you put your Bollinger bands, etc., and then you will see that after a moment, okay, now it has to be tight. It doesn't have to be tight for one second. Then it's going to have a breakout. 
has to be tied for at least a few days, weeks, sometimes, sometimes months. Uh, remember, the TBB strategy is a strategy based on long period investments. Okay, uh, these long period investments will bring you more than thousands or hundreds of thousands of dollars of profit. Okay, so on this currency specifically, what happened is that it was on a very tight market, stable market for quite a long time. All right, so if there's a a, a small a, a small breakout all right don't expect it to be your open position okay you can open a position here on your fake out it doesn't matter but if you look at it you want to be taking profit immediately okay so what would what would you do exactly is that you will have one fake out because most of the time if you have fake outs it might go back down you don't want that you want your moving average to have a direction so when it breaks, when it starts breaking, don't open your position. This is called a fake out because it broke upwards. It could broke downwards, but it's still a fake out. Because why? A fake out, it, it's when it gives you like a, a fake position, a fake opportunity. This is a fake out. So your fake out broke upwards and then went back down. Don't open a position. You don't want to risk it. It's to minimize your risks. Okay? The volume showed that it broke out extremely high. Remember, this is on a one-hour chart on the TBB strategy, not on the SBB strategy. SBB strategy, I recommend 30 minutes. Okay, on the TBB strategy, you have a fake out. All right, it broke. All right, you want to minimize your risks, so you're not opening a position yet. You saw that the volume went highly up. Okay, it's going back down, but once it went highly up, you saw that your moving average is taking a direction. Once you see that your moving moving average is taking an upward direction, you're looking on a very long position. What you're going to do is that you're going to put a horizontal line on the fake out rate when it, on on its maximum when it reached, and then when it reaches that rate again, you're going to open your position because your moving average has a direction your fake out is no longer avail uh, no longer available meaning this is your opportunity this is no fake opportunity you open your position here don't put any take profit yet because this is a big opportunity you can put uh, you can put, you can put take profit close your position open another position etc but on your fake out it's no longer available because on the same rate, you won't have two fake outs. You have one fake out. All right. So after it breaks, you open your long position. And then you do, you let the market do the rest. Okay. So thanks for coming to our webinar. I uh, hope you all enjoyed it as much as I did. Uh, if you have any questions, you can send me an email at info at sunburnfx.com, all right, or you can send me an email at adam.williams.fx at gmail.com. Remember, open, a, open an account with me, and trust me, you'll be more than satisfied. Thank you very much for, open, for, uh, for joining our Mark and Manus webinar. Um, hope uh, you had a great time, uh, and I will be sending you an email for our next webinar. Thank you very much.